Assalamu alaikum. My name is Fabio Vazvaz, and I wanted to do a presentation today on, I think, the disease of our time that we need to address. Just want to make a very clear declaration, proclamation, so that we can guide our thoughts. Palestinians, Lebanese, people you might say will live in the Levant, West Asia, referenced as the Middle East. Our humanity, sacredness, sanctity of our lives, cannot be debated, negotiated, or discussed. What is up for debate and discussion is the impunity, the chosenness, supremacy, and the belief that we can do no wrong. We can do no evil since we are gods. Maybe we're not saying it directly, but indirectly that is the message we're sending out. Since we're always psychoanalyzing others and we are not allowing them to speak for themselves. In a word, it's gurur. And a statement that I have heard from lessons in the past, is the more gurur a person has, the more harm comes out of this person. I'm going to discuss gurur soon. So, but I notice our talks are always reflecting on the perception that Zionists have of people in the region. And we're always trying to prove our humanity. We should actually be responding by questioning the moral superiority that is being claimed, the chosenness that is being claimed, because that gurur is what's causing this exponentially increasing harm in the region and across the world. Perception is projection. Perception is project projection. So when Zionists call us animals, I see it and I interpret it as projection. The worst amongst us are those who believe they are and act based on this foolishness and delusion, building a social, political, and legal apparatus to evade accountability. What does this mean? It means everything Zionists and their allies accuse Palestinians, Lebanese, and anyone in the region of doing is a reflection of their own actions. If they open themselves to accountability, the truth would come out. When they avoid accountability, we can assume any person or group that avoids accountability, their perception of the other is a projection of themselves. What we are bearing witness to from their actions is they're defending and denying genocide committing terrorism, war crimes and genocide, violating human rights, undermining free speech and fair elections. These tactics are a clear attempt to distract from their own lack of accountability. I wanna take you to the article that I wrote in the past and let me just hit the share button. This is in July 24, 2011. It's about Gurur. Like I said, I ask people for feedback. I send usually my writings to an editor, helps me to uh, say more so that it's understood more clear. 
and to strengthen the flow so that the message that I'm trying to get out is understood as intended and it is, and it is meant. I'd like to take you to that article. And this is the article, it's called Wurur. This is the article that I highlighted. It's a sense of moral superiority over another. There is a hidden desire to deny the other a right to exist, as we are seeing in Ghazi right now, unless they accept this moral superiority of the us. During the conference on Islamophobia at UC Berkeley, this was again earlier in 2011, so I'm, I'm taking an article that I wrote in the past that I edited later, but I also believe it fits the situation now. I said that Guru is the driving spirit behind Islamophobia. I don't, I'm not bought and sold that we should address the symptom, which is Islamophobia. I believe that the root cause is Guru and not the fear of terrorism or the fear of Islam. Islamophobies like the Norway killer see themselves as the protagonists or the protectors of the tribe or nation. They see themselves, their tribe or nation, as always right, <clears throat> collecting grievances about the other people or Muslims by amplifying and noting every perceived injustice done by them. People who have gurur within them are notorious for engaging in double standards. That's why we should address gurur, not the double standards. Double standards is the symptom, but the root cause of disease is gurur. When the other does something wrong, they are experts at connecting the dots to every so-called injustice done by the other or by anyone who breathes sneezes, and looks like the other. However, if an injustice is done by this us group, Zionist, imperialist, colonialist, they are experts at rationalizing, disconnecting any dots, justifying or explaining away the injustice, erasing it from their minds, even trying hard to revise history as well. You'll see speakers, they'll get up on stage, they'll talk about the Holocaust, they'll come down, and they'll start defending a genocide. This is called guru. They cannot connect the dots accurately because they, within themselves, believe they can do no wrong. They're morally superior. They're never questioning their actions. They're never questioning their words. They're never questioning the impact of the harm they do on others. It's always about what others are doing on to them and if it feeds their sense of moral superiority or not. They omit many wrongs by their tribe or nation and assume that if the tribe or nation escapes accountability by a court of law, as we have seen, they escape ICJ, they escape ICC, they threaten all of these courts of laws. That holds them to the same level of standards that this action is acceptable or didn't happen. So they can threaten, they can kill the negotiator, they can avoid accountability they want. They can kill indiscriminately, they won because they got away. This is how they see the world. They're killing people in Gaza. No one can stop them. They won. At the time, it was Ayn Hershadi, but you have similar voices now. They just figure out how to change the sticker, but they're saying the same thing. It's Gurur that grants Ayn Hirsi Ali to speak on credible news outlets to literally rally everyone to defeat Islam. It's Gurur that gives a platform for Pam Geller and Bridget Gabriel to rally America 
they Muslims must be stopped. These same organizations would not grant a platform to anyone to rally for a defeat of Judaism or any other faith. The media at the time was nonstop inciting by putting these voices like Urshad Manjay and you know Anne Hershali and everybody who, who had something negative to say about Islam as spe- uh, under the title of free speech. Then when Trump came on stage and he started attacking them, the media, uh, then it was it became like you know. All of a sudden, they started to think about disinformation and the harm of disinformation and misinformation, although they should have recognized that they were being served what they were themselves promoting. So they started, they could not see their own narcissism, but they saw his narcissism. I believe it was, I I shared a video in the past. I can't find it, but it was by John Stewart who said that, you know, who questioned one journalist because she was very bothered by the narcissism of Trump. But she, they were not bothered by their own narcissism, where they were constantly, again, feeding, nonstop feeding this frenzy of putting people with the worst vile things to say about Islam, giving them tremendous platform all over America to spoo and spoo and spoo and spoo, like literally regurgitate. And they would say free speech, the right to offend, free speech, the right to offend. And yet, if somebody in Gaza says anything while being oppressed, having like some, you know, the power, the foot of power crushing them, they would say, look, they hate, you know, Jews. So again, it's that moral, it's the disease is moral superiority. It's that sense of guru. Since Islamophobies face no accountability for their hate speech or calls of war against Muslims, they were always calling against war, always calling against war. And it was seen as free speech. So we were talking about October 7th, we're getting upset. But yet we're not, we're kind of like erased our in our history. All the nonsense and all the moral superiority and all the hate speech and the calls for violence against Muslims that was going on and on and on and on until tra- Trump came into power and started to, to attack. Now he wasn't doing it for Muslims because he was attacking Muslims and he was attacking the media. He was attacking everybody. But because he was attacking everybody, it's like a light went in to the individuals who were focused on Muslims. And they started to, at that time, switch gear and say things that were more positive about Muslims as a way to gain gain their favor so that they can remove Trump from power. Because they wanted him now to lose. And the only way they could lose is now to kiss up to Muslims say, you know, we'll, you know, we'll say this, we'll say this as a way to win them over so they can make sure that Trump loses. But they didn't learn their lesson. They didn't learn what they were doing before was wrong. They were nonstop spewing and amplifying the worst voices that were calling for violence and hate against Muslims as they are doing now, inciting genocide in Gaza. And this is what happens when there's no accountability. Is the situation, the disease gets worse. We go from discussing sexual harassment is wrong to literally openly, without any social reprimand, discussing raping and abusing Palestinians openly in talk shows all over Israel without any condemnation whatsoever. The 
The rising hate crimes against Muslim never triggered any warnings. This platform divorced from any accountability for their hate speech, in my opinion, contributed to attacks in Norway. At the time, there was a terrorist attack in Norway by a, Nor by a Norwegian. But again, we don't remember those events and all the massacres against Muslims because we have a peculiar way of connecting the dots. Since the other cannot face accountability, then every action the other does is an injustice. Every word or thought is psychoanalyzed. That's where Islamophobies heard the word at the time it was called Turkey in their discourse. Even if the other does good, the good action is really a disguised attempt to take over America, hands and injustice. So again, anything, you know, uh, that you say, if, even if you're doing a good action, they distort it and twist it as though this is taqi, what you really are doing this good action, but you're, you're aiming to take over America and turn it into a Muslim country. Such voices are always reminding the world of their good actions, though, while forgetting the good of the other. They're always talking about, they'll use phrases like the most small army. This is again, how this is how Gurur speaks. You're always promoting your chosenness, your morality. They are also constantly comparing the actions of us to the actions of them. Continuing with my Facebook feed, I read a comment by Max Blumenthal. This is again, talking about during the Oslo killings. There used to be a commentator on Fox News. His name was Juan Williams. And he was justifying and rationalizing why he was afraid of Muslims in 9-11. Again, this is close to like 10 years later. They're still having, they're still speaking about this one event while indiscriminately bombing all these Muslim countries and all these people are getting killed. And they're focusing on this traumatic tragedy of 9-11. Making it like, you know, they're making it the elephant in the room and they're erasing all the other things that are taking place around us. So 9 11 so then the Oslo killings happen, and Max Lowenthal then says, you know, in light of Oslo killings, will he suddenly become afraid of his white peers at Fox News? Because they claim, you know, 10-7, you know, 9-11, blah, blah. This is why we're doing the genocide. We're bombing these countries indiscriminately. We're killing, we're, you know, this, this horror mentality. And then God responds always with an event, make them to reflect. But when you have horror, you don't see your faults. You're always focused on looking and psychoanalyzing the faults of everyone and anyone. And a lot of times it's projection of your own thoughts and your own feelings. Because they're plotting and planning to take over Palestine in the region and they're doing good with the intention to take over Palestine, they project that onto Muslims. If Williams, named Juan Williams, fears were driven by fear based on the traumatic tragedy of 9-11, as he claims, then he, along with all those who claim they fear Muslims due to acts of terrorism by Muslims, would now develop a fear of white people with white garbs. This is in Norway. But if it's driven by guru, this is why I, I, I keep pushing our community. It's not Islamophobia. The disease is guru. They need to be called out for the sense, false sense of moral support. What brought down Satan? Guru. This delusion, the sense that you know I am better than Adam. Guru. This moral superiority. The more gurur a person has, the more harm comes out of that person. The more gurur a group has, the more harm comes out of them. You can never call such individuals to accountability. 
It was fruitless to call Satan to accountability. God didn't waste time. He said, let, he let him go. You, it's very difficult to call people, groups, to accountability when they are nurturing guru within their society, within themselves. That's what leads this mindset, this spiritual reality is what leads to genocide. These, you know, again, it's the Oslo attacks, like the Oklahoma bombings, would disappear from memory. How many times do we reference the Oslo killings? How many times do we reference the Oklahoma bombings? We don't. This is how, again, this is the, 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 ins, like the inside of the people of Urur. Anything they do wrong is erased from history. They pardon themselves just magically. Continuing with my Facebook reading, I read another comment by uh, Stephen Zooms, who noted on his Facebook page, Got a couple of media calls today about the terrorist attacks in Norway since they consider me to be an expert on Islamic terrorism. Since it appears the person responsible is a far right-wing Norwegian, I told them to find an expert on Lutheran terrorism. If the acts of terrorism by Muslims are promoting all the discourse on Islamic terrorism or terrorism, we would see discussions come forth led by experts with magical connecting dot skills on Lutheran terrorism. But if these discussions are driven by Urur, we would see justifications and explanations that try to magically remove any connection to this attack and any attack by white extremists. Over time, it did not exist. Or was the act of a lone madman, no connecting of dots, locked? I conclude with a comment by Gary Young in an article in Europe, Where is the Hate? Events in Norway suggest the primary threat to European democracy has never been Islamofascism. That clunking, thuggish phrase that keeps lashing out in the hope that it will one day strike a meaning. But plain old fascism, the kind whereby mostly white Europeans take to the streets to terrorize minorities in the name of racial, cultural or religious superiority. Again, the more gurur, moral superiority a person group has, the more harm comes out of that person group. Let me share something on that since I am in the theme of speaking truth to power. I shared this also in the past. Islam didn't come to manipulate or counter emotions, desires, personality, art, and culture, which is again the accusation about free speech, freedom of expression. Islam came to regulate these things within boundaries where they do not harm one or another. Some people are so afraid of honesty, terrified of seeing the truth about themselves. Scared of walking from their delusion, fearful of turning to God instead of their ego. 
That's why they engage in simple cunning games. They lie or they smear or they counter, they manipulate or seek agreement from like souls. So on the day of judgment, you know, this tribal uh, relationships, family, they will be broken. Like Noah was broken, you know, the family relationship between him and his son was broken. It's not a reference between me and any family individual. I'm just speaking in general. Because souls will be connected to like souls. So you may think like you're protecting, you know, whoever it is you're protecting. But in reality, on the day of judgment, those relationships will be disconnected. It won't be like, you know, this group and that. It will be souls connected with like souls. So it may be a little bit of a shock to some. Those who are committing genocide in Gaza will be connected with those who committed genocide during the Holocaust. Say it again. Those who are committing genocide in Gaza will be connected with like souls, meaning those who committed genocide during the Holocaust. They will stand together as a group. Like souls will be connected with like souls. They manipulate or seek agreement from like souls. That's why they don't mind their own like business. They're always like meddling in Middle Eastern affairs. They're always looking for ways to undermine elections, to undermine the growth, to undermine the, the process of liberation in countries that have like kicked out colonialism. But if we only fear honesty and but if we only fear honesty and truthfulness because we rely on ourselves for love, compassion, forgiveness, if we truly believe that no matter how shallow and manipulative, how much meddling or how much sinful cunning or engaged we engaged in, we could run to the we could run to the off forgiving, would no longer be afraid to ask for sincere and true repentance. Because they never really look inward. They're always looking out there. To turn our claims into dua for guidance to grow and to live, and that would look like faith. This quote is directed to a group of people who, through their manipulation, sinful cunning games, have exposed themselves as people who lack faith. Mamish Shara always said, no one engages in sinful cunning games except those weak in faith, morals, principles, and light. If we look into the Quran, you'll find your story. You know, this is how Satan was. He was running around undermining the growth of Adam, the spirit, the faith of Adam, coming from every direction, except up. So the dua that I would like to share with you is this, because you will see that people who tend to be suffering from gurur, if you look at the way the Prophet Muhammad, upon him, peace and blessings, said, they're all, all they're concerned about is that they shouldn't be oppressed, they shouldn't be wrong, no one should say anything that hurts their feelings. So it would be like, again, if we, if we look at this prayer, it would be something like they turn to God and say, I seek refuge, lest someone make me go astray, lest someone makes me slip, lest someone wronged me, lest someone act foolishly against me, or lest someone oppress me. This would be somebody in a state of guru. Their whole concern, they're just self-absorbed about their own group and their own life. But they take, they turn to God or even amongst themselves and take no precautions, no precautions whatsoever 
to protect the other from any harm, from any oppression, from any, like, you know, slip. They, they take no precautions from any, again, wrongdoing. They have absolutely no concern. There's no discussion about how do we protect, how do we ensure civilians are protected and taken care of? How do we make sure the preemies are taken care of? How do we make sure the doctors that are providing care are taken care of? How do we make sure the journalists are not targeted? That type of discussion is not there. So where is the ethics and morality? when you just have one eye. Where, where, where is that ethics and morality? So I, again, I, I leave it to you to reflect on, but the disease that we are battling is gurur, is the sense of moral superiority, racial, cultural, religious superiority. Now I'm not talking about where you are promoting virtue. I'm talking about where you are promoting that you can do no wrong. This is that moral superiority. Where that you build an apparatus, like I mentioned, legal, educational, social, political apparatus that calls everyone under the sun to accountability for every minute to big, you might say, violation and transgression while pardoning yourself for every minute, small misdemeanor or even major uh, transgression. I end with the saying by Confucius not cultivating virtue, not learning from the lessons, not being able to take justice on hearing it, not being able to change what is not good. These are my words. Cultivated people foster what is good in others, not what is bad. Petty people do the opposite. And this is what people with guru do. They cultivate what is bad. They promote and rationalize genocide, terrorism, war crimes, targeting civilians, targeting journalists, targeting aid workers, targeting healthcare workers, targeting preemies, targeting anyone that moves and breathes. Every, even the laws are targeted and anyone who attempts to stop them from doing harm is targeted and threatened. The negotiators are targeted. Those who are trying to call for a fire are targeted. Those who are trying to educate and cultivate virtue are targeted. Those who are trying to call for justice are targeted. And there is, this is what we are seeing right now. Things will get worse unless we start cultivating virtue, learning from the lessons of the past, not just building museums, and then start thinking, as I mentioned in other blogs, like if I was there during, you know, Hitler's time, I would have done X, Y, Z. And then God says, well, here's it. This is actually what you would do. Again, the day of judgment, the relationships we have now will be cut off. Souls will be connected with like souls. The people engaging in genocide in Gaza will be connected with those who engaged in genocide during the time of the Holocaust. Their leader will be Hitler, and they will stand together. 
side by side, the fair other pharaohs and tyrants of the history. And it may come as a shock to them, but they failed to learn the lessons and they shut down all the doors for those lessons to reach them. Nobody prevented them from going into this alternate reality they chose and they build that world of alternate reality where they can only see the faults and the shortcomings of others, but nobody can point out their faults and shortcomings to them. I hope this is beneficial, but we need to push the disease out there. The disease is gurur. The more gurur a person or group has, the more harm comes out of that person and group. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.